Hey, it's Monday, and that means it's time for Loco Lights on WHHI, powered by LocoSports.com. The high school football season drew to a close in the Loco on Friday night, with the Hampton County Hurricanes seeing their magical inaugural season come to a crashing halt with a 42-21 loss at Oceanside Collegiate Academy. The Canes took a 21-14 lead in the third quarter and seemingly had the momentum before the Land Sharks scored 28 unanswered points to take control and advance to a matchup with fellow charter school power Gray Collegiate for the Class 2A title. So it's on to basketball season we go and the USCB Sand Sharks were back at home in the tank on Saturday playing host to Payne College out of Augusta. The Sandshark women got back on track with their first win since opening day, snapping a three-game skid with a 68-33 win over the Lions. Freshman Janiah Hayward continued her strong play with 17 points, five rebounds, and four steals, hitting double digits for the third straight game, while Junior College All-American Brielle Bartle scored 13 as she continues to work her way back from injury, and Savannah product Michaela Primo stuffed the stat sheet with 10 points, seven rebounds, and six assists. The USCB men hit the century mark in three straight wins to start the season before stumbling at Savannah State last week, and they nearly reached triple digits again Saturday, holding off Payne for a 94-81 win in the sort of track meet we've come to expect from this Sandsharks team. Freshman Marcus Overstreet continued to dominate inside with 21 points and 14 rebounds for his third double-double in five games, while Larry Bullock added 13 points and Aussie sharpshooter Kobe Shuri scored 12. Point guard Dylan Lewis put up another solid line as well with 9 points, 5 boards, and 6 assists. The Sandsharks travel to Jacksonville on Thursday to take on Edward Waters College. Next home game is December 9th against Regent University. And now we have some high school hoops to fill the space between USCB games. After a smattering of scrimmages, preseason tournaments, and early season matchups, high school basketball season starts to hit its stride this week with a busy slate that includes a number of loco on loco matchups. We're still waiting to get our first look at most of the squads, but a few teams have already made a statement in the early going. It's no surprise that the five-time defending state champion Hilton Head Christian Academy girls are off to a quick start with three lopsided wins to begin the season. Led by the senior trio of Tamiya Hutchinson, Morgan Scott, and Devin Yard, who are averaging 52.7 combined points thus far, the Eagles are averaging 72 points per game and have allowed a total of 78 points through three. Tougher tests coming Friday at home against Calvary Day. The Bluffton Bobcats have been the gold standard for area public school girls teams in recent years, and they seem poised to retain that status after winning the Earl Campbell preseason tournament last week at Whale Branch Early College High School. The Bobcats routed Bridges Prep and Beaufort to reach the final before dispatching rival Hilton Head High 57-36 for the title. Takoya Hayward and Amira Brown had monster games against the Seahawks, who were without star Linda Young, so the home-and-home -home rematch and region play should be interesting. But with bigs Jelena Mosley and Maddie Washington alongside the dynamic duo of Hayward and Brown, the Bobcats will be tough to beat. The more surprising 3-0 start on the girls' side belongs to the Cross Stingrays, who have added Battery Creek transfer Genesis Wilson and HHCA transfer PJ Benson to a group of talented younger players, to form a potential Skiza 1A contender. It has been quieter on the boys' side so far, but we're getting some idea of what to expect from some local teams. After meeting for the Skiza 3A boys' title a year ago, Hilton Head Prep and Hilton Head Christian Academy are both off to 1-0 starts, as the Eagles won at Coastal Home School, and the Dolphins picked up an impressive 36-32 win at Calvary Day. We don't get the first meeting of the rivals until January 12th in Sea Pines, so sit tight. The Dolphins and Eagles might face more competition from region mate John Paul II this season, too. After winning only three games last season, the Golden Warriors already have two dubs and three tries this year, led by senior multi-sport star Christian Tilton and an influx of newcomers. The Earl Campbell preseason tournament provided some enticing loco-on-loco -loco matchups, as Class 2A No. 5 Hampton County knocked off Class 1A No. 3 Whale Branch in a Top 5 battle, but the Warriors held off Bridges Prep in a preview of a Region 7-1A showdown we'll get to see twice more. Colleton County's boys also won their first two games in convincing fashion, and they have an intriguing test coming Saturday at home against Hampton. We'll talk plenty of hoops tonight on the Loco Sports Lowdown, live at 9 p.m. on the Loco Media Network. And you can check out the Loco Hoops Report live at 10 p.m. Tuesday for reports from gyms around the Low Country. For Loco Sports and WHHI, I'm Justin Jarrett. Until next time, go Loco.